Hi, my name is Eric Medvedev, and the title of my poster is Prospects for Machine Learning Model Reduction for Dynamical Graph Grammars of Complex Biological Systems. In this brief presentation, I will discuss five things. The first is an example of a complex biological system. The second is an example simulation of a simplified model using dynamical graph grammars. The third is what dynamical graph grammars actually are. The fourth is how we simulate dynamical graph grammars on a computer in an efficient way. And finally, the prospect of machine learning as applications for our simulations. By the end of this presentation, I hope you will have a better understanding of our methods to simulate biology on the computer and what prospects we have for reducing models and in turn, reducing the computational cost and complexity. So on this first slide, on the image here to the right, we have a cross section of the shoot apical meristem where the cell nuclei are marked by red and the cell walls are marked by green. And image B, C, and D show how we can recover an approximation of the cell structure. On the bottom right, we have a zoomed in version of a plant cell microtubule, or plant cell microtubules, I should say, in a different part of the plant. And together, we can take these images, the left and the right, to better understand what we mean by a complex biological system and what it looks like under the microscope. Now, on this slide, I'm going to present and show you what a simplified version of a plant cell microtubule grammar looks like growing in a box. Here we assume there's a low density of microtubules. The gift here on the right shows microtubules models as graphs where the white are growing ends, red are retracting ends, black are where intermediate junctions are formed, and the other colors are intermediate nodes in between. And here on the right, we can see an example of our box simulation domain. And below that, we have a zoomed in version with the microtubules overweighed. Um, and you can think of the GIF on the left as what takes place in a single small part of a blue area here. Uh, so now you, got, you may ask, what is a dynamical graph grammar? Well, it's a language to describe graphs that change over time, hence the dynamics. As follows, with languages, we can describe a set of rules for how graphs behave. So to the right is a sample grammar of how microtubules grow. Um, each of these can be either deterministic or stochastic. What's going on here doesn't really matter as much, but more about what it represents. Um, so if we think of a microtubule as a set of beads on a stretchy string, the first rule shows how the space between beads at the end of a string changes as we stretch it. The second rule says that we have space between beads and that space becomes too large, we add another bead onto it. So you can kind of see a reflection of these two grammar rules, plus an additional splitting one here in the bottom of this um, GIF. So, what we're also working on is a simulation algorithm that allows us to simulate a graph grammar in parallel. And this is done by formulating an algorithm from the master equation and operating splitting. In the upper right, we have a graph that represents the connectivity of a decomposed domain. And essentially what you should take away from this graph is all the nodes in this graph represent different places where we can simulate rules firing and our algorithm determines how we choose to correct the order. The image on the bottom right shows how the simulation can quickly become more complex and get out of hand when we have high densities. And that is basically why we want to try to find a way to parallelize it. And in order to do that, we're targeting parallel performance portable code that scales by using uh, these two libraries, Cocos and Cabana, along with MPI. Cocos and Cabana are libraries written um, in collaboration between the national labs that allow performance portable parallelism. And what I mean by performance portable parallelism is if we look at this image right here, this kind of shows what a uh, machine model looks like, where this is represents a generic example of like what a node on a supercomputer might look like. And these are all the different combinations of in between. And what we want to do is write code that works on different kinds of nodes, whether you have different CPUs with different sets of cores, or you have different accelerators like GPUs, et cetera. And then when you take a collection of all of these different nodes, you can use MPI to communicate between them. And that should allow our algorithm to adapt to parallel computing. And finally, on this slide, on our final slide, um, well, essentially what we want to do is we want to reduce the model by using machine learning. And lots of data can be produced, uh, graphs and observables over time. And we have an entire zoo of algorithms to pick from in terms of machine learning. And what we want to do is reduce models in the form of learned dynamical graph grammars or other observables. And this could allow us to run on bigger simulations on smaller machines or alternatively run bigger simulations that have been made smaller 
and run them larger and longer. And this should ultimately help us reduce computational cost and complexity. Thank you.